Hello, welcome to Galata Studios. It's good to see you. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my studio. I like to call it Galata Studios. I'm David Galata. And if you're here for a second time, if you've seen any of our stuff before, thank you very much for coming again. Really appreciate your support. Today we have a lesson. And this lesson has to do with painting construction. It's interesting because painting construction is often uh, belittled today. Uh, a lot of the art world does not think that constructing and the methods of constructing a painting are as important because they're not looking for permanence necessarily. I don't know. For me, importance, the importance of being an artist is being able to extend your message beyond your lifetime where you were able to touch the lives and hearts of others as long as they can see your painting so for me it makes sense that your painting should last longer than you do and for that you need to properly construct the painting without proper construction a painting can have all kinds of problems cracks blistering uh, it can become uh, muddy and you can have a lot of problems occur later on. It can even just peel right off the canvas if you're not careful. Construction depends a lot upon the medium that you're using. For example, there are different rules for acrylics than there are for oils. Acrylic painting doesn't really have a lot of construction rules to it, and that's because it dries so quickly. However, I feel that there are some dangers, especially in using something organic like cotton or linen and then putting a plastic based product on it because the cotton and linen breathes. It absorbs moisture from the air and releases moisture from the air, which means it expands and contracts. The plastic does not and it does not necessarily hold the canvas together unless you paint both sides of your canvas with the acrylic, in which case then maybe i don't know i've never tested that and it would take decades to really test it so in the meantime i prefer to use a more old-fashioned form of painting and that is using oil paint oil paint has the advantage that the oils also are hydroscopic means they absorb moisture from the air they also expand and contract about the same rate that your prepared canvas will do so we like to have an oil primed canvas which we have right here and right now it is covered with what is called sizing and gesso and these are designed to protect the fibers of the cotton from the acidic qualities of the linseed oil this way it doesn't burn holes in your canvas over time and yes that does take decades even centuries ah, if you can make a painting that's quite permanent, you should worry about that just a little bit, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're going to do this in parts. The first part, which I'm gonna do right now, is we're gonna talk about the first layer. And the first layer is very, very important. There's a main rule in oil painting called fat over lean. And this means that your first layers, which are going to be the under layers, are going to be as thin as possible with more volatile uh, thinners and mediums. And then you layer them on top of each other, getting heavier and more oily mediums as you build up. So the fat rests on top of the lean layers. So we're going to begin. I have here just some bristle brushes and these are very, very handy for this sort of thing. They're very good for lean painting. They cover a lot of area. I have my painting trowel all set, your typical painter's knife. I'm using old Holland colors as usual. These are all oil paints. I have cobalt blue deep, which is a very Oops, let me get that on the camera there. There we go. A very rich, deep color. That's going to be my darkest color. I'm just going to use a little bit. I don't need a lot. I am also using Old Holland Schwenigen Blue Light. Almost like a sky blue, like an azure. 
I'm going to put a little bit of that here. And again, we don't need a lot of paint. This is not a huge painting, as you can see. This is a, actually a fairly small painting. Um, as you can see, I've gotten some, some paint on my finger here. And that's why we always have the rule of do not eat or drink in your studio. It, it's, it's not safe. It's not safe. You know, these are chemicals you're dealing with, even if they say non-toxic. Do you really want these chemicals in you? I don't. Please don't do it. I want you around. I want, I want to be able to share with you more. The only way that's going to happen is if you keep yourself safe. I'm also using a King's Blue Light. This very pale form of blue. And I happen to really like this color very much. It's a real favorite. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from light to dark. And I like working from light to dark. It's much easier to correct too much bright on wet paint than it is too much darkness. You can't really remove that until your next layer. And then there's always going to be a little transparency there. So you kind of want to be careful with your dark colors at the beginning. So here I have to thin my paint because my paint is very thick. Old Holland paint is a very rich, concentrated paint. So it doesn't come out of the tube liquidy or buttery or anything. If you want it buttery, you got to do it yourself. I kind of like the do it yourself thing. I have here turpentine. As you can see, it's a very clear turpentine. And I like to use sunny side for this. I'm just going to take a brush full of it. I'm just going to just splash a little bit onto my colors. Again, we don't want a lot. We really don't. I'm just going to wet the brush. Just a few drops in each one. You don't want it to be too thin, but almost an ink-like quality. You want to make it almost like an ink. Now I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm just going to mix that turpentine. You keep your colors a little further apart because if they're too close together on your palette, they can bleed into each other, especially when they're thinned. And you just want it to be a, a nice, thinner quality of paint. There we go. That's one of them. I'm going to get my, my rag here, clean off my knife. I'm going to get to the medium one, which is that lovely azure color. Get that all mixed in with the turpentine there. And there we go. Now I've got that all set. And you can see it's almost, almost like a, a thick ink. And that's exactly what you want. Now finally my dark color, which is the cobalt blue deep, which is absolutely magnificent. It's just, it's just a lovely color to work with. And it really takes to thinning very, very nicely. Some of the others, you kind of kind of work at them. They, they could be a little pasty. So there we go. All right. I'm going to take my largest brush here. And just with the lightest color, I'm going to come in. As you can see, I can spread it just like this all around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm pretty much going to cover as much as I can. I want to get rid of all this white. We don't need it. If I want white in my oil paint, I'll put it on later. A little more turpentine there. There we go. Right from the brush. Right from the brush. Very direct. You can see this leaves brush strokes. Unlike oils like stand oil and other mediums, it does not relax the brush strokes. So the brush strokes will always be there. This can be very handy. Uh, sometimes those brush strokes add a really interesting dimension and texture to what you're working on. But you want really thin paint. One of the advantages of really thin paint is that it will dry much more quickly than paint with a lot of oil in it. Now this will dry in a few hours as opposed to a few days or even weeks. And if you want, you can take the leftover paint and you can do the edges. That way it doesn't have to be framed. If you don't want to frame your painting or if you're doing a painting for someone who really isn't you know, into the whole framing thing, and not everybody is, then this way you can satisfy that by not having white all around it. And you can just paint it with the main base color. I like to do that with paintings. If I'm going to paint the edges, I'll paint the edges with the main colors I was using to start with. These colors. I like to work with threes, three different colors. 
I like three colors for my shadows, three colors for my highlights, three colors for my midtones, and three colors for my backgrounds. I find this way it doesn't make the painting too much to look at. Now we have a nice even blue with some, some nice textures in there. You know, can be very interesting. And now I'm going to go to my next color. I'm going to use a different brush this time. I'm going to use my filbert here. Still a bristle brush. And I'm just going to blend in some of these middle blues just to show you that you can still blend and get interesting effects. I like this kind of circular effect here. I like that. I don't know what that is, but you know, we'll figure that out later on. You know. There we go. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to have fun. You know, even if you take your work seriously, which I assure you I do, it still can be a lot of fun experimenting with paint. I'm just doing this real fast. Just real fast. We still have some of the light colors in there. We have some of those medium colors in there. So blue piece. Yeah, we're using a lot of blue. And now I'm going to switch over to my round bristle. And here I'm going to use our darkest color. And now I'm going to try to think a little bit about what I'm doing here. Where do I want those dark colors to be? Where do I want the light to be coming from? A lot of artists figure that out before they even put brush to canvas. Sometimes though, it can be a lot of fun to figure it out later on. You never know where your eye is going to bring you. As you can see, it's bringing out already certain features of this painting. We haven't even really started yet. We haven't even blocked it in. We're just putting in some colors to give us some ideas. There we go. And get these guys in here. I want some, some interest in here. I want some interesting bits blended in. So it's not too dark. If I want to darken it, it's much easier to darken it later than it is right now. Because right now it's going to thin into these other colors. But this way I've got something to look at. I've got something to wonder about and think about as I decide what's next for my painting. And this will dry in a few hours. And we're going to come back to this painting once it's dry. And we're going to work on the next layer, which will be more fat then this thin layer, it's going to have a little bit of linseed oil in it, maybe some raw paint, and that's nice and safe. That takes a few days to dry, and then we'll come back to the painting and do a last layer with deeper oils and mediums involved. So this is what we've got so far, kind of like this big swirling thing. It looks almost like a tornado up there. Yeah, maybe I was watching The Wizard of Oz or something, and... You know, I'm thinking about tornadoes. That might be a fun place to, to paint. Certainly be a little interesting. If anyone knows how to get there, drop me a line. Let me know. That might be fun. I'll come along with you. And come along. Oh, have, a, have a good time there painting away. All right. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to bring you up close just for a second so you can see. Get the, there we go. And that's just the beginning. That's the start. So we'll be back in just a few minutes from your point of view, a few seconds. We'll be back once this is dry and we'll go to the second layer. Welcome back. As you can see, this painting is now dry to the touch. Only took a couple of hours, but I gave it a good two days just to make sure it's nice and stable before going on to the next layer. Now the second layer, since we had thinned this one with turpentine, we can use either raw paint, which only has linseed oil in it. We can increase the linseed oil to make the paint a little more fluid, or we can add a touch of medium. Either which way, it'll work well because it will now rest on top of this very lean paint. So the paint with more oil is called fat. So it's fat over lean, fat on top of lean. And the main reason for this is so that the paint, thin paint dries very quickly. Fat paint does not. Fat paint actually takes much longer to dry. You don't 
want to have something that's taking longer to dry being underneath something that's quick drying because then the quick drying paint will crack and wrinkle because it's going to be all drying and the rest of it's still drying it's still shrinking it's still expanding it's still losing body as it begins to dry and oxidize if there's something that's fast drying on top of it it's going to break it's going to have problems so when we put lean underneath it quickly dries we put slower drying material on top of that and on top of the slowest drying mediums and materials and that's properly constructing a painting so that it won't crack and wrinkle and fall apart over time it doesn't happen right away it can happen 10 20 even 100 years later and then the painting will begin to fall apart so it's not something that you're going to see in the first two years uh, I have seen paintings that were terribly damaged because of this that were only a year old and that was because they'd used very heavy paint underneath and very thin paint on top and put all these washes on top to get an interesting effect and the whole thing split the whole paint had these big splits in it so try to avoid that and do things fat on top of lean not the other way around don't do it the other way around do it the way we're doing here i have the same colors here and now today what i'm doing is i'm adding a little bit of linseed oil just a little bit just to bring these colors a little more fluid motion I want them to be a little more fluid I'm not using a lot you just use a few drops just just a little bit I like to dip the knife in and that's about as much as you're gonna need most of the time unless your paint is very very dry and you need it to be very very loose in which case, yeah, you might want to use a little more. Got my painting rag here. All right, so let's see how this came out. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to mix these colors up with their medium. You want to get it nicely mixed. Otherwise, you're going to get dry paint patches and that's never helpful. You know, you don't want that. There we go. So your light color is done first. And this is in the opposite order of how you paint it. There we go. Now we have our middle paint and we're just mixing our medium into the middle paint, just mixing back and forth. Now this particular set of this lesson here is a free one and it's here to promote the other lessons. I have 20 lessons that I'm constructing at the moment as we speak. I am constructing them to be available on my Patreon account and through private access. So if you're interested in any of these instruction videos, please let me know either through my website at galatastudios.com or through my Patreon page at patreon slash galatastudios. All right, we're gonna start with the darks and let's see how this works. Let's see what happens when we've added that. Well, oh, there we go, it glides. It just glides right in there. You can see the color is bold, very, very bold. Now, the colors that we used before, they look a little paler and that happens often with thinned paint. It pales out a bit as it dries. This will not. That's because of the linseed oil. The extra oil in there is going to keep the paint looking a little more wet, more refracted light in there. And that's what's going to happen. It's, it's going to look deeper and darker. I'm going to add some, some streaks here just for fun. This is a just for fun painting, just for the purposes of this lesson. I plan on doing a lot with teaching how to stretch canvases, how to make your own paint, how to make pastels from scratch. Um, some of my students have really flipped out over that one uh, and have made some wonderful pastels from raw pigment. So I teach all these things, how to prepare canvases, um, how to make charcoal. So if there are any things that you would like to learn, let me know and yeah, I will probably put it on the list of things. I do not work with acrylics. 
So I couldn't tell you how to make acrylic paint. That's, that's a totally different animal from making oil paint. Uh, then, then you're dealing with petrol products and things like that and emulsions and no thanks. I'll, I'll stick with flax borne linseed oil. That, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. I really like this darker area. You can really bring in some lovely details here. I'm just going to do enough to demonstrate how it looks and how you can really begin before everything was very loose and so it was hard to get any any details in. Here the paint has a little more body because of the oil and so we can really bring in some nice details in there. And note I'm not using a lot of paint. You don't need a lot of paint for this. There we go. Let's bring that in. You can bring in shadows, bring in all these dark patches here and there. You know, if you have any ideas on where you want things, you put in your shadows. Always keeping in mind, of course, where your light's coming from. And that would be under a lesson under color theory and light. Now, right now we're looking at construction. And right now you can see how it glides over the rest of it and really stands out. And that's one of the advantages of doing fat over lean. It's more difficult to do this if everything is the same. Things aren't meant to be the same. At least that's my opinion. Everything was meant to be a little different from each other. As it makes things fun. Otherwise, what's the sense? What's the sense? I don't want to live in a homogenous world. That's not fun at all. There we go. It does mean sometimes you gotta put up with things. That's all right. I'm big enough to put up with a few things, eh? Hey? You know? You know? That's okay. You can always go back to painting. Painting doesn't have any any craziness. Painting is, is it's you. It's you and the paint. It's you and the paint. There we go. I'm a very apolitical artist. Here we go. We've got our deeper colors in now. Just want to put a little bit here. Just want to what this is called scumbling, and I go over that in my oil painting demo, and that's another lesson. And of course, you can always catch some of this stuff on YouTube because I do like painting live on Facebook and YouTube. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to bring in. So in my medium color, so you can see what that looks like on top of this. I'm just going to bring that right in. See, it glides right in. And note, you can blend things much smoother now. Much, much smoother. And this is also because the ground, or the gesso that's on the canvas, is no longer dry. It has paint on top of it, so it's already absorbed oils and turpentine and even pigment from the first set of colors that were done in wet and so this paint can glide much easier and blend much easier there we go if i tried this on a on a dry canvas that hadn't had any other paint on it i'd be struggling and crying right now please please do your job please blend i know no it all works out it all works out because i use the proper methods of construction and that's what you can do too. Always remember your fat over lean rules. They won't steer you wrong. They really won't. They've been around for a long time and so have the paintings that have utilized it. It's not a rule because someone said so. It's a rule because it's what works with oils. So if you're oil painting, this is the best thing you can do. Although I will make as a side note before I switch over to my lightest color, is that this also works very well with watercolors, I found out. You can use many of the techniques of oil paints with watercolors. I'm bringing in this light color. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. The streaks blend. They move very fluidly over the paint. And this is also one of the advantages of mediums. The mediums help with making the paint gain a texture that you need in order to complete your painting but you have to use them wisely you have to use them with the rules of construction which is fat over lean that's the big rule you also don't want to use too much medium 
We're going to cover that in the next segment where we're going to have our finishing layer. Like I said, this is just a demo, just a little, little thing. Who knows, maybe someday I'll transfer that to another painting. So, in the meantime, we're now going to let this dry for another two days. So we're going to come back to this painting and then we're going to see just how we can then add an even heavier or more fat medium to the paint to get even better effects. So we'll give it two days and I'll see you then. Hello. Okay, we're back. It's been a couple of days. And so the paint here has mostly dried. It still feels a little, little tacky here and there. And that's on the linseed oil, which takes longer to dry than the turpentine, which is much more volatile. That will dry very, very quickly. So now we're ready to put in our third layer, which is, of course, with a heavy or fat medium. And I've chosen stand oil. Stand oil is one of the heaviest. And you have to be careful that that's usually part of your last layer on an oil painting. It's either stand oil, sun thick oil, or a wax medium. Thing to be careful about wax mediums is once you've started with them, you have to finish the painting with them. You cannot go back to an oil-based medium once you've started working with a wax-based medium because the wax never truly dries. It just congeals more than anything else. And if the temperature goes up, the wax will loosen up a bit. If it gets cold, the wax will harden and that could cause wrinkling and cracking in any layer on top of it. So it's oil on oil and then wax on wax. Uh, we will be covering wax mediums in another lesson from Galata Studios. So now we're here, we're ready to begin. I've already mixed the same three colors that we had before. Yay, nice and easy. All right, so I'm going to start with my dark color here. There we go. Got, you can see it's with the stand oil, it's a much more liquid, and yet it's got a a heaviness to it. Stand oil is a boiled form of linseed. It's been superheated in vacuum and so it doesn't get a chance to oxidize but it thickens. It becomes very very thick like an emulsion. Only it's an emulsion made from flax oil rather than petrol product. Uh, so here we go and you're gonna see I'm gonna bring it right up into here. Look at that smooth stroke. Stand oil has an advantage in that it removes brush strokes. That's one of the things that it's very famous for is it dries, it softens a bit. And so any little brush strokes that are left in there will also soften. This is great for doing portraits or times when you want a very smooth effect. You'll also see that the paint looks very, very rich. And again, that's because of the oil. You're seeing the pigment suspended in that oil and so it brings like like wet stone you ever take like a, a rock from the ground it looks dry and you know kind of brown and then you run it under some fresh water and oh wow there's greens and blues that you didn't see before this does the same thing the oil actually helps you to see the colors at their richest so the thinned paint here is a little drier looking it's not not, it's kind of chalky, whereas anything with the fat oils in them look very rich and lustrous. Now we're going to cover some things. Uh, you can even see here where I'm working deep within another color, how it just makes that color more vibrant and richer. And that's one of the beauties of working with these oils. These oils can do so many things. All right, I'm going to move over to the medium one now. And we've got our, our beautiful bright blue here. And I'm going to show you one of the other things that these fat mediums are great for. This is what they're really famous for, and that is blending. They blend with other colors so smoothly that it becomes hard to tell where one color ends and the next one begins. So you can get these very smooth transitions. Again, that's very handy for certain forms of painting. I'm going to bring it right in here. 
There you go. Look at the smoothness of that. Just, just glides right in. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It, it, it's, it's very, very nice. Now, the other thing is, these mediums allow you to do something that thinning the paint cannot do. And that is, it can bring a lump of paint. Let me see if I can bring that into you. Ah, I'm getting lost here. There we go. A lump of paint right onto the canvas and it will stay there. It won't drip down. It won't disappear. It's just going to stay in place. And that is something that these mediums do. They, they thicken the paint while loosening it up at the same time, which is something thinning the paint cannot do. You thin the paint, it's just going to drip off the canvas. If you thin it too much, it's just going to run like liquid. Whereas if you use medium, it's going to hold its body. It gives the paint some extra buttery body. It's very nice. It is like painting with butter. Uh, one of the things to also keep in mind is do not use too much medium. If you use too much of a heavy medium, you risk blistering. Uh, you also risk that the medium will start to leach out of the paint and form these bubbles of linseed and other oils. Uh, and that can make a real mess of your painting. So just a little bit, a few drops is really all you need to get a gorgeous semi-gloss surface. And that is very, very important. Now I haven't touched anything upon the varnishes. First of all, look at that. Just see, I can just keep going back and forth and back and forth and gliding away. I'm going to be covering varnishes in detail, including how to make your own in another lesson. But first I want to say that if you're going to varnish your painting, please always make sure that your painting is at least six months old. That's right. Half a year oil painting does take a long time. Now this layer of paint is going to take two weeks to really dry. It will be mostly surface dry, but dry enough that you could continue working. If you want to work with it while it's still wet, like two days from now, if I come into the studio and go, you know, that needs a little more of this or that, I can just step right in and blend it as if I had just painted it right then and there. That's an advantage of slow drying paint. You can change your mind. You can walk in, get an inspiration, and immediately begin to paint as if you'd done the whole thing at once. So that's a real advantage to keep in mind. Otherwise, I tuck it away, let it sit for a couple of weeks, pull it out, do the next layer. And again, that would have to be a very fat layer to go over something like stand oil uh, or sun thick oil. Now, many of these things are good for very fine details. You can pull like little lines out because again, the paint holds up. It holds up to that. It gives the paint some extra body. And that's very important for doing portrait work or anything like that, even landscapes. You know, you want like little branches and stuff. So you're going to want to have that in place so that you can work with them and keep blending. And you can blend for days. You can just sit there and blend for days. So your painting should be six months old before you varnish it. And that's because it takes a long time for the inner paint to dry. It might surface dry in two weeks. But if your paint is really thick, and that's usually not a very good idea, although Van Gogh certainly did a great job with that, the paint is still wet deep inside the core of the paint. It forms like a skin around the central core of the paint. And that can remain pliable for a very long time, decades. So. You want it very, very surface dry before you varnish, or you're going to have the same problem. Varnishes are usually resins that have been dissolved in turpentine. Uh, so they're kind of thin, uh, but they're not because they form a hard surface. The varnish can crack if the paint is too wet underneath it. So you wait about half a year. That's a rule of thumb. If a painting is a little heavier, well, then you don't touch it for a year before you varnish it. The only time you really want to varnish is if there is an unevenness in the gloss of a painting of parts are matte and parts are glossy. It can be very distracting unless that's the effect you want, in which case you don't varnish. But then you choose a matte varnish, a glossy varnish or a semi-glossy varnish and very thin, 
whisper thin you put your varnish on after the painting is completely dry you don't want to use a lot of varnish when i first started as an artist i admit i heard that varnishing was the best thing you should do for a painting because it protects the painting from atmospheric chemicals and ultraviolet light and all that stuff and i figured more was better it is not it is not it makes the whole painting look greasy it makes the painting difficult to clean hmm, that's not very good and it also gives you can have bubbling and cracking if the varnish is too thick and then you have to remove it and that is a job and a half you want to make sure that you follow these rules of construction when working with oils because oils can last for centuries if constructed properly if they're not constructed properly they can fall apart very very quickly and sometimes it's going to be your buyers if you sell your work who will come to you saying hey why did my painting get this big crack in it what's going on with all this bubbling and blistering here uh, you didn't follow the rules of construction for an oil painting now you have to fix it for them and probably at your own expense so it's better off to simply find a way of utilizing the rules for construction in order for you to create the paintings that you wish to create and that's what i've done i like to use classical rules of painting while creating very abstract surreal and even impressionist works so you have a lot of flexibility with oils have no fear of that they're very very flexible in what they can do and they are excellent at how well they do it so what we have found here is that these mediums are very handy they're good for blending they're good for putting finishing details in but you have to use the rules you have to use these rules and these rules weren't set down by some person who said we must all do it this way it's just the rules of chemistry and that's really what it is it's the rules of chemistry you know if you pour acid on something it's probably going to dissolve it unless it's glass and even then there are certain acids that, that do etch glass. So, you know, that's not that's a rule of nature. And that's what we're working with here. I've heard artists complain about all these rules when it's not rules that some authority made. It's the rules of chemistry. And it's really good to know a little bit of chemistry when it comes to painting, which is another thing I'll be covering in another lesson here. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this free lesson from Galata Studios, from myself, David Galata, on the rules of constructing an oil painting using the fat over lean rules. This is the first of many lessons. If you are interested in purchasing video lessons from Galata Studios, please contact me at my website, galatastudios.com, or through my Patreon page, which is Patreon slash Galata Studios, where the lessons are part of a reward system you can help the studio and also gain a lot of knowledge or you can contact me at galatastudios at gmail.com and we can discuss lessons or more videos like this one i hope that you've enjoyed this galata studio lesson and i hope that you have a wonderful time painting and please try this out check it out it's a lot of fun and i think you really really enjoy the results thank you very much have a beautiful day mm -hmm.